This presentation first looks at what we mean by data mining and data mining on the web. We tackle obvious but necessary questions such as why do data get mined? How is data mining done on the web? What kind of data gets obtained and tracked? We compare in broad strokes the difference between web data mining and magazine data mining to understand the significance of web in data mining practice. Finally, we summarize privacy issues that are presented by the types of data mining being done and propose some ideas on how the future can be better for all parties. Van Wall and Roya say that data mining is the process of extracting previously unknown information from data, which can in the right context lead to knowledge. Some other scholars, Kasala, Blockhill, and Nuveen, define web data mining as the whole of data mining and related techniques that are used to automatically discover and extract information from web documents and services. Marketers say data help them understand and build their customer profiles. With this kind of marketing intelligence, they have the ability to market more effectively, which results in users receiving only marketing messages that are relevant to them. Search engines are also heavy data miners as they use them to better their search results. Cookie technology is one way this is being done. The website you visit sends a cookie, which is a string of code and your computer stores it in your hard drive so that the website can identify you and record your data. What kind of data can these websites and companies obtain about you? Well, among many, they can know the country and location, the date and time of the visit, because this information is available to them automatically from your computer's IP address. If a site requires you to register, typically ask for your name and an email, and that gets on their database. With cookie technology, the frequency at which you visit or use the website can also be known. This kind of data is usually then anonymized, aggregated, in order that they do not identify you as a person, only as a frequent visitor of, say, YouTube. Why does this practice stir privacy issues? To understand the potential privacy issues that have arisen with the internet, it helps to see how other media have obtained and processed audience data. For example, a magazine distributes a survey filled out by a reader of his reading habits, likes and dislikes, and other pertinent information. The survey gets collated and interpreted and then shown to advertisers who then can decide whether the magazine's audience is their targeted target audience and whether the cost of advertising can still be substantiated. The reader gets to enjoy the content of the magazine at a minimal cost because advertisers help to set off the cost of producing and distributing the magazine. Sounds simple, right? Web users also enjoy the free services available to them, much like TV or newspapers and magazines. There's nominal or no fees to read and use the websites. Advertisers basically pay much of the cost involved in producing the content and distributing it. Web users also like the convenience of not having to specify their preferences or their username and password every time they use a site. Service providers want their consumers' information to better their service by recommending things that they will use and to sell their consumers to advertisers. So far, everybody benefits from this model. The problem is, unlike the model in television and magazines, web users may be subject to much more than just their demographics. They also could be giving information that they're not aware of. For instance, in YouTube Privacy Notice, it says that YouTube may record your usage of the site, including other users you communicate with and other information you click on while you are in YouTube's environment. It also says they use technology to track who you are so that they can detect that it is you using the site and you don't have to re-enter your information. But it also means that they can keep track of what kinds of ads you've seen and clicked.
Proponents of data mining on the web think there's nothing new about it, since data mining has been here all along. But there are differences between then and now. Surveys are active retrieval of the information or active feedback mechanism, and now this is being done in the background, most of the time without the explicit consent of the user. Various scholars have noted that even when bits of data do not violate privacy, when combined and aggregated, they can take on a new dimension and identify the individual even when parts of non-identifiable information. Other observers also call for privacy laws to not only meet legal requirements, but ethical standards, because we know that what is legal may not always be ethical. Additionally, privacy policies on websites are often inadequate. When it says quote-unquote third parties, what do they mean? Is YouTube a third party of Google since they're owned by the same company? The business landscape is such that many companies are subsidiaries of larger conglomerates, so it begs the question, what do they mean by a third party? Many of these possible third parties are not disclosed on the privacy policy itself. Privacy policies also state that they can be changed without notice. Any usage of the website is considered an agreement to those terms and conditions. Finally, legal language can be difficult to understand, even if a user is prompted to click on Agree before they use the web service. By the way, who owns this usage information? Users or companies? Can users withdraw consent at any time? A real ethical concern is the increasing usage of the internet for health and financial services. Advocates cite the threat of inappropriate data collection by the government, because now that data is obtainable from private companies who survey and use this data. These questions guide and perplex many privacy advocates and internet companies. To improve current practices, it helps to pursue ongoing debates between marketers, advocates, the FTC, and big players like search engines and content providers to discuss the rate and effectiveness of self-regulation compared to more government intervention. Users should also take responsibility in increasing awareness in how to protect their information and privacy. They should demand better infrastructure to give them better control over personal data that can be obtained.